Hi guys and welcome to another video. So I've put myself up one of these swanky Capture One clips which basically allows me to attach my camera there and take it off and put it on with the idea being that it's basically quicker than unpacking my bag to get everything out to get my camera out to take a shot if the light's changing. So essentially my camera is always on hand. Now I'm hoping this coupled with this Micro Four Thirds GH5 Mark II, which you will have seen in recent videos. I'm hoping this is going to allow me to basically walk a little bit faster, co cover more distance, and essentially get more shots. Now, I've been quite interested in one of these Catch One clips for a while, but to be honest, I've been put off by the price. And this is the problem, I think, with a lot of accessories for landscape photography. The reality is, the majority of them are unessential and also quite overpriced. But I'm hoping this could actually be a bit of a game changer. But what I'm doing today is I'm going to give it a good tryout as I walk up towards the Sheviot, which is the highest peak in Northumberland. And I think what I'm going to do is, en route, I'm going to have a chat with you about accessories for landscape photography, which actually are useful, as opposed to being total rubbish. So the first useful accessory for landscape photography isn't really camera related at all, right mate? Oh, nasty! And that is basically decent footwear. Obviously I'm coming up the hill today so I'm, I'm wearing boots which are now very soggy. Um, but my feet are still dry and everything's still safe. But the reality is, regardless of whether you're going up a hill, regardless of just whether you walk around a city, or even just going to the beach and sort of climbing on a few rocks to get that sort of perfect composition. The reality is, you need some decent footwear. You know, you, have, you need to keep your feet dry. You need to keep your grip while you're walking so you don't fall. And you just need to be comfortable. So really, don't underestimate just how important when the correct footwear is for landscape photography. So whilst some accessories are really fall into the essential or non-essential categories as such. I think without a doubt, decent footwear is essential if you're going to enjoy your landscape photography. Yeah, I'm super pleased with the shot over there. I'm going to quickly show you what's happening. Spin you around as you can see. Basically, it's a nice shaft of light and those lovely clouds coming out from the Sheviot way. Yeah, I think I'm going to be really pleased with that one. And this one, basically what I'm trying to do is use all this heather here as my foreground interest. So, my next... I would say essential accessory for landscape photography. I'm loving this clip by the way, it's just great. So my next essential accessory would be one of these, a good camera bag. Now it doesn't have to be a backpack. I know some quite well-known photographers who don't use backpacks at all and what they do is they use a sort of shoulder bag, a messenger bag as such. And so then, especially if they're doing city stuff or doing stuff not walking miles away, they can actually just swing the bag around, get the camera out, get the lens out, so they don't have to bother one of these clips and things like that, and just change and got everything right by them. And, and if I'm shooting a wedding or a commercial job, that's what I do, I have one of those. But for hiking, I love taking something like this. Now this one, you will see the back opens and there's plenty of room for the essentials, like clothing, waterproofs, food, and the bottom part of this pack, basically I can fit my GH5 Mark II, my GoPro, my lenses, everything else. And if I want to carry more gear, I can actually get a bigger ICU 
and take up more space for cameras. And if I want to carry less ge gear, I can get a small ICU, which is the internal camera unit. And um, so there's more room for other stuff. I just find it very flexible and ideal for the way that I like to work. But of course, as I say, it's very much your own, down to your own self preference. But what I would say is, whilst I have used normal backpacks and just thrown my camera in it, it's not entirely ideal. Although, you could actually, if you're doing, especially if you're doing long walks and you're doing, sort of doing a lot of hiking, just use a normal hiking backpack. But one of these Capture One clips could transform any bag into a good means to carry your camera as well. But yeah, I think really, whatever happens, what you don't want to be doing is getting out of the car and walking with your camera around your neck and with nothing else on you, because you need to carry drink, you need to carry stuff just in case things go a bit pear-shaped. And it just means you've got everything on hand that you may need. Just make sure you don't overpack it. But yeah, for me, I wouldn't be without a good camera backpack. This is nothing short ah, of horrible. And the problem with the Sheviot is it's actually quite easy to get lost because unlike the lakes and stuff like that, you don't have loads of really well-made paths and you don't have loads of sort of crags and things which sort of almost guide you the way up but just give you really good landmarks to know where you're going. I actually have a big expanse of bleakness, especially if the fog kicks in. If you look over there, in the distance, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's something happening on the hills. So I've, I've, that's definitely the clouds getting lower, which was the forecast. And I wonder if it's actually going to work. Uh, is it going to pay off? Am I actually going to get a bit of fog? I, I'm not sure, but anyway, it wouldn't be the first time I've got to the top of the Shiva to not see a thing. So we'll have to see what happens. But of course, the problem is, what do I do if I, the visibility goes and I'm not sure where I'm going? And, and the reality is, you need a map. And I think this is going to be my next almost essential accessory for landscape photography, and that is a decent map. And most of the time, I use a map on my phone now, which is fine. Uh, it's great because it'll actually tell me where I am. It's a GPS reading, it'll tell me exactly where I am. But you know what, sometimes, especially if your battery goes flat or you might need your phone in case you need to call emergency services, something like that. Well, what I do do, you know, the last thing you want to do is be up a hill without any power on your phone, isn't it? I always carry a paper map, just in case I can work out exactly where I am. Now, you may be thinking at this point, if I'm just going to the coast, I don't really need a map. And you know what, yeah, you're right. But the beauty of a map is if you actually have a good map for the area you're visiting, you can have a look at it. And you can almost sort of mark out where there's points of interest, you know, nice, sort of nice craggy rocks or sandy patches, things, things that you can use for foreground. So you can almost pre-visualise what you want to shoot in the first place. So basically a map's not only good for when you're actually out, it's also good for pre-planning. -pre so I think, as somebody who has an ever-grown collection of maps, for me, maps are pretty much an essential accessory for landscape photography. And to be honest, you're never going to go wrong by having one in your bag, are you? Just in case. Anyway, I'm going to continue upwards and have a chat with you further up there. Well, it's all kicking off. I've got a feeling I'm not going to see a fat lot on top of the Sheviot. If you look, I think basically I'll go down there and swing up to the right to get over to the Shivia. But you can see the clouds coming in, so I'm wondering if I might try and swing around and come over on the edge of that mountain hill there and come down the valley. Not sure, but what I am going to try and do, I'm going to see if I can take a shot here. Oh, whoa, 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 look. Right, guys, look what's happening. Can you see, we do, we're totally coming in. In fact, I'm going to quickly swing, switch the video camera on so you can see what's happening. Because it's a, uh, well, in fact, 
I'm afraid I'm not. I'm going to take a photo. I'm going to try and climb over. Well, climbing over is not the problem. It's again past the mud that's a problem. Yeah. Squelch, squelch, squelch. You know what, I think, as this is so interesting, I'm going to crack open my fourth essential accessory. Maybe not essential, but something I like using and I'm definitely going to use on this occasion. Come on, be honest. You probably knew it was going to be a tripod. Why am I using a tripod? I could be doing this handheld. Well. I think I just want to nail a nice composition and then let the light do the rest. And admittedly, I've only bought a fairly lightweight tripod on this occasion, which is not ideal. But you know what? It's better than no tripod. Right, so I'm quite happy with this composition. I'll put it on just two seconds off timer. I'm going to ensure image stabilization is turned off. I'm shooting at base, base ISO, F8, one, two, five of a second, ISO 200. That would cause absolutely no issues at all for handheld, let's face it. But what it lets me do is let me take this time to check my histogram, see how my histograms look and see, I think I can actually bring the exposure down a bit. And I can also refine my composition. Now I think portrait is going to work better, and it does. So in this occasion, really, for me, it's not so much about the tripod keeping everything level, or keeping everything st still as such, even though of course it is, and of course that is important. But for me, why I like using tripod is the fact that I can set up, I can look at it, and then I can adjust if need be and get a composition just right to how I want it. And then, basically what I'm going to do, I'm, just, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait. Instead of me chasing the conditions, I'm going to let the conditions come to me. It's a nice simple composition really. All it is is the fences leading through the frame. I, if I'm being pedantic, I would like it to come from the left hand side into the right, but that's just that's just life, you know, it's running that way. And then we've got the Sheviot in the distance with the cloud coming around it. And it's just a case of waiting for the cloud to fall into the right place. But by using the tripod, I'm just going to leave this camera here for a while until I'm happy I've got this shot and then I'll go into the next one. And it just, it means, what I find is if I take a composition and then I'm waiting for something and I try to get back in the exact same place, I never get it exactly how it was. This makes it almost idiot proof. What I would say with this lightweight tripod is I wouldn't really risk putting too much, I wouldn't really risk using it if it was too windy because it probably wouldn't be that much of a benefit but for this, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Right, so that's the shot. I'm really, really, really pleased with that one. That was really nice. Pea soup now, absolute pea soup. Which leaves me a bit of a, a bit of a quandary because I can't really see much point in going up the Sheviot now. Because as you can see, I'm pretty much walking in, into fog and cloud. So I think what I may do is I may consider dropping back down into the valley. There's a nice waterfall down there and that could be quite interesting. Right guys, and as if by magic, here we are at the waterfall. Actually, we're slightly above the waterfall. You can see behind me there, that's where the waterfall actually drops off. Um, pretty impossible to get down there at the moment, so it's a bit mucky and... Well, it's very muddy, very slippy, very dangerous, a bit of a gorge. 
really wasn't worth the risk, a bit like coming back down from the Sheviot, you know, sometimes. Basically, it's not worth my dying for a photo, is it? Now, my last essential accessory for landscape photography is the humble polarising filter, which I've already fitted here. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it onto the screen of the camera. Now, a polarising filter is particularly good at cutting through reflections. So, as you can see in this example, without the polarising filter, basically all the bland white sky is just reflected off this water. But now if I turn the polarising filter, and it's a good idea to turn it slow. Sometimes you turn it too fast, you don't notice the benefits as such. But as you can see, the stream goes a lot darker, so no polarisation, polarisation. Now there are disadvantages with using the polarising filter. It does cut out an, up to two stops of light, which actually on this occasion is exactly what I want, because I want to try and exaggerate the movement blur of the water. And also it can vignette sometimes, depending what angle you are in relationship to the sun. Now obviously the sun's not showing at the moment because it's underneath that great diffuser of cloud. But you know, if you had directional sun, basically you want to try to be working 90 degrees to it. Uh, and if you start going off, then you might find you get cross polarization, things like that. But all in all, a polarizing filter is interestingly, the only filter you can't really mimic digitally. So all the rest you can actually, to a degree mimic, even your sort of neutral density filters, you can get away to sort of create long exposures without filters. Polarizing filter, there's not really that much you can do. So it is really the one filter that I will always carry with me, whatever. And that includes just going out for a family hike. I will just put a polarizing filter in my bag just in case I want to use it. Right guys, I'm going to take this shot and I'm going to put it on the screen. And that's it guys, that's the five things that I consider essential when I'm going out taking landscape photos. Now out of the five, I suppose the one I could possibly do about is the tripod. But even then what I tend to do is I tend to take a little tabletop tripod. Sometimes I just want to take longer exposures, so by having a little tabletop tripod with me, that means I can still sort of balance it somewhere and hopefully get something. Anyway, I've got one final bonus accessory for you, and that is a head torch. I've lost count of the amount of times that a head torch has got me out of trouble. I always have one in my bag, just in case I misjudge a walk and I might be walking back in the dark. And I know you could say that you could use the light on your phone, but it's never the same, it's never as good, and you've never got your hands free for clambering or things like that. So yeah, do yourself a favour, get a head torch, throw it in your bag, and even if you just forget about it, it's just there just in case. Hopefully I won't need it tonight, but I've still got a bit of a walk out to the car, so if I do, it's there. <laughs> anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've enjoyed the photos. The, a quick update on the old Peak Design clip, which is, the camera's obviously there now, but the clip's still on my bag. Honestly, it's been a bit of a game change to be able to just get my camera off and pull it and back on and yeah, really impressed. You never know, if I did this video again, I may even add that to it. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do consider giving it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll see you again for another one very soon. Thanks again.